Hello, my name is Gene. This is my review of the Scratch and Sniff Stickers chapter from the Anti Machine Reviewed. Okay, so to start us off, what exactly is John Green talking about in this? So, what John Green really does is that he gives a clever and introspective view on humanity through the lens of smell, building it up through multiple different angles and views. I'll get back into late the first half of that later. Alright, so these are the layers we're going to go through, different sections of the chapter, plus some little extra information at the end. Okay, so let's start off the book here with paragraphs 1 and 2. So John Green begins this chapter by setting the stage, really. He gives a retelling of a recent experience he had. And the purpose of this, these paragraphs is to introduce the topic of smell through the disconnect of how we usually imagine it versus how we tend to actually use it in real life, which is equivalent to laying the rebar for its foundation. Okay, There's two main e devices that he uses here, the first one being an anecdote, which permeates throughout both paragraphs. And what he does with these is basically build a solid introduction to the topic through a relatable experience which corresponds with his next discussion, how smell can impact memories. Okay, the second device that he uses is actually a juxtaposition. So what this really does is give a first-hand demonstration of the cracks in human and smell, therefore bringing to light what he intends to talk about throughout the chapter. All right, and in paragraphs 3 to 5, John Green dives into the story of smell through the groundwork he laid in the first paragraphs, smell and how it impacts memory. The purpose of these paragraphs is to lay down the root of his story, using quotes and logical arguments to build a more logical take on smell's unique intricacies. Okay. The main devices that he gives here are a quote to Helen Keather and human dissection. So let's start off with the first part. Uh, Green implants a very famous quote into this paragraph and then applies its meaning to the anecdote in paragraph 1 and 2, thereby using it as a justification slash explanation of the memory set of smell. The second part of this is human dissection. What I mean by this is that John Green lays the first of two principal views, supporting it through a dissection of the human's unhealthy quote unquote relationship with smell in both writing and real life. Alright. And here we have paragraph six and through eleven. So in contrast to paragraphs three and three to five, Green gives his own deeply emotional and relatable story with smell, all while giving a view in, into his persona. Okay, and the purpose of these paragraphs is to take a more emotional side to these paragraphs in contrast to the logical side beforehand by giving anecdotes and heart-wrenching slices of his past to build a connection to his audience through an experience many can relate to. Okay, and the main appeal that he gives throughout, this, throughout these paragraphs is pathos. And he begins this through giving a deeply relatable story of his past, tying it into his dissection of smell through the scat scratch and sniff stickers. Okay, so this relatability that he gives here demonstrates the utter power of smell in a more real perspective rather than logical proceedings, thus showing how Green's life experiences are ones which can be used as the likely perspective of most of the audience. Okay, and to give an example of this, shown in Cyan on the example and in the paragraph text, John Green uses scratch and sniff stickers to release himself from the pain the world inflicts on him, even if temporarily, which shows a deeply personal illustration of how smell influences memories and feelings, one many can relate to, using something as a temporary relief of all the stresses and fractures in their life. The nostalgia this builds unifies the audience and Green, just like how it unifies not just the physical senses he's discussing in this chapter, but also the quote-unquote mental senses, a sort of nostalgia, if you will. Alright, paragraphs 12 through 19. So really what John Green does here is that he gives logical definitions and elaborations and quotes to build up a foundation for another logic defined point that supports his main argument. Okay, and the appeals that he gives here are as I'm gonna call them are logos with a chance of mitos, or ethos, if you will. Okay, so he begins these paragraphs with an explanation of microencapsulation to give a precedent for Green being very knowledgeable thus showing his trust when it comes to logical discussions and thoughts. And of course, he then harnesses this right after when he ties this story to scratch and sniff stickers, going down the rabbit hole of the creation and elimination of smells. All right. Another side that he introduces here is he gives a very famous quote from a Roman poet, which he uses as evidence for how the idea of how s humanity focuses on smell bad smells. This builds a sort of credibility with Green, as he uses it for evidence to this point, thus validating it, and by extension, John Green himself, it sets a precedent. 
Okay, and he concludes these paragraphs with the idea of recreating the smells, giving a theoretical validation of this idea through a prime example of it, which is the recreation of a flower scent, the uh, Hawaiian mountain hibiscus. Okay, and then he gives another example of this through the example of the Cavendish banana, which demonstrates the real relevance of this trend of thought, similarly to how arguments need evidence, which is elaborated in the text, is context to be considered valid. Right, and here we have the last paragraph of the story, which is really, I guess you could say, a conclusionary paragraph. You know, he basically unifies all the ideas that he presented throughout the rest of the chapter, building it into one cohesive section with which masterfully completes the house he built. Now, how does he do this? Well, he gives this last paragraph a very essay-like uh, conclusionary layout, hinting at the information presented throughout the chapter. Okay, I'm going to give some examples on this. The really the big one is that he ties up the loose points he made and supported throughout the chapter, intertwining them. He then gives an overall view on the topic using the credibility he built throughout the chapter. So of course, as most conclusions are, rather than implementing any new information or devices, John Green harnesses everything he has created throughout the chapter, his credibility, his illogical knowledge, and his emotional connection, laying it all on the table, which you could relate to eating the fruits of his labor. Okay, and by the way that he did this is by recalling every main topic he has talked about, remembrance and memory through smell, arti artificializing of smells, and nostalgia and escapism through smell using it almost as a checkbook filled with all the ways he appealed to the audience to now cash them in. Now there's something you may have noticed throughout these, this PowerPoint is that smell has almost always been in quotations. Okay. And as I, as I said before, now we're getting back into this now. And the reason that I did this is because I believe John Green is talking about something bigger than smell throughout these chapters and something that really could be seen as not even about the smell itself. Okay, now what is this you ask? Well, Green has been building a review on not just smell, but on humanity and its distinct behaviors and thought process. Now, how does he do this? Well, there's two main reasons and explanations for why. The first one is that Green has used the lens of smell to explain the intricacies of human behavior by creating parallels to it all throughout the chapter. All right, and a continuation of this is that many of the points that Green uses can be perfectly parallel to one aspect of humanity and its behaviors. And I have too many examples to show you here. All right, so the first example is the human concealment of their smell. So in this section, John Green describes human relationships to their own smell, noting how we tend to conceal it and distort it through factually indiscorrect descriptions. An example of this being how people in stories tend to smell like vanilla, lavender, and sandalwood, while in reality we just smell like bacteria and dead skin cells. Right, so what I believe he's trying to parallel here, or the between the line purpose, is to talk about human concealment and categorizing. So this example here perfectly parallels how people tend to conceal part of themselves and only show one slice of us to other people, one which is usually a contradiction to the overall us. Okay, and the other part of this is that in stories, for example, we tend to place people in good or evil categories, either by the authors themselves or by the people reading their works afterwards. Now the issue with this is that even though people people are almost never so one-sided, but we love to build these categories and sort things like this, where there are being dozens of examples across human interests. All right, and the second example here is how smell influences memory. All right, so this is calling back to the first couple chapters where John Green describes how people's people contribute smells to memories in a deeply personal way, his own experience in life. Okay, and the Really, the in-between the line purpose of this, I believe, is to create, to show a human dependence on past memories and nostalgia to get through hard times. So this section masterfully parallels how people often use items of a better time or memories of a bygone era to escape from the world's hard times. Now, an example that I created here to show this is how older folks tend to place items of their teenage years or gifts from their lost pet, uh, relatives on a pedestal giving them a sense of protection or love from those times. Of course, the thing is, is that although these things may have actually come from contentious times or situations, people's brains usually place things of their past in an idealistic light, almost like a subconscious yet powerful mechanism to not lose hope. Right, so this kind of parallels, this example parallels how John Green used scratch and sniff stickers from his past to escape the realities of his life, 
as they gave him a sense of protection. So it was really just like how smell can take people back to a safer time. People depend on things of their past, either memories or artifacts, to feel safer, even if they may have not been just a wonderful gift in actuality. All right, so what exactly would I give this chapter? Well, I'm going to give it a five. And the reason for this is that John Green gave a massively organized view into humanity and its intricacies through the lens of smell, one which perfectly parallels so many elements of our thought process and imagination. He does so with multiple different angles, which work to only enhance the building he created, all while never once mentioning the lens of color. And this sort of implicative writing is one which, in my opinion, deserves nothing if not five stars. Alright, so this has been Gene. Thank you very much for watching. Have a great day.